Why is it so important to have clean air in your house? What I found in my research on its impacts on the skin, basically exposure to heavy metals comes from the air, believe it or not. And the other interesting thing is when it comes to washing your face, so if you have sensitive skin, don't skip over washing your face twice a day. Even if someone on YouTube told you to only wash your face once, forget that information. Particles in the air are telling your skin cells to die faster. They're told to undergo a process called apoptosis. We don't want that. And it's just really important to be aware of the water that you are drinking. Most people know to not drink out of plastic bottles. Sometimes people will hook up an alkalizing machine or an ionizing machine to their tap, but they're mineralizing unfiltered water, which doesn't make sense to me. What are the worst things to eat that create the most oxidative stress? Processed foods. There's some times that fasting makes sense and we want to do it. And there's some times where maybe not too much fasting. Well, it's a little bit different for men and women. Women have, I mean, we're four different people at any time of the month. <laughs> that is true. What's going to cause more oxidative stress? Smoking cigarettes, eating processed sugar, processed oils, like a sedentary lifestyle. I'm actually going to say Rachel Varga. My friend, my amazing radiant friend, thanks for joining me again on the Keto Camp Podcast. My absolute pleasure. And Ben, I adore you. I adore what you're doing. I love the energy and the radiance that you have behind your way to serve others, help themselves feel their best as well. So thank you for what you do. Hey, I'm feeding off of your energy. You're feeding off of mine. That's why we get along so well. You were on my podcast um, a little over a year ago is an amazing podcast conversation for those who did not hear that one episode 685. Um, go listen to it, go watch it on YouTube. We talked about leaky gut, biohacking tips, etc. Now we're about a year uh, past that first conversation. We had planned to actually be here in person in my studio <laughs> to sit down and do a conversation. You actually had to go to Canada, but we kept it on the schedule and that's what we're doing today. And it's very exciting because there's a lot of cool things you're up to. And I want to start with this uh, new research paper, hot off the press on your website, schoolofradiance.com on oxidative stress, and just share all the details about this new paper. Mm -hmm. Well, really what I wanted to do was provide a framework to the biohacking community of what should we really be focusing on first that's going to make the biggest difference for reducing oxidative stress. And of course, my angle is the skin. How can we get great skin, hair, nails? But then it goes so much deeper than that with our cognitive function, with all of our organs functioning. And so really that's what the paper is about. It's what to focus on. And there's five key areas to focus on in that paper. And it's just important for you to all know why I wrote it. The other why is Obviously, I come from the medical aesthetics world with over 20,000 procedures performed, trainer, all that stuff. Well, and you you know, you said that pretty fast. Slow down and say that again. <laughs> How many procedures have you performed? Well, not on myself, on uh, other people. And other people. Um, about 20,000 procedures. So 20, that's... 20,000. I know, it's hard to believe. That's a lot of experience. So, you, you know, take that for what it's worth. That's That speaks volumes, at least it does to me. Thank you. And I wrote that paper to also help elevate the medical aesthetics industry to get up to speed with the integrative functional world and the biohacking world to, in an effort, provide more powerful rejuvenation and reduce adverse events. Because if people are doing surgeries for whatever, like say you need a knee surgery, a hip surgery, these are all good things to do in my paper anyways, on top of, of course, the the rejuvenation side of things too, just so that you have the best outcomes, you heal fast. And I wrote this paper because I just observed that biohackers heal faster about half the time after say an intense laser resurfacing session. And they just require fewer interventions. They just look better. So obviously I had to create a framework for both the biohacking community and then also the medical aesthetics community. And those are my two worlds, which I think is kind of what makes me a bit unique. It does because you, you kind of bring the best of both worlds and you, let's face it, we don't want to ignore um, one side. We want to get extract the best of both worlds. And I, I love that you focus on that and you're not putting yourself into one camp or category or, or classification. So you said five key things to mm -hmm. focus on five key areas. I mean, don't leave us hanging, Rachel. What are those five <laughs> key things? Well, really, if you think about it, 
the more pure we are, the fewer environmental toxins that we have exposed to, the better our operating systems are going to perform. So I looked at, okay, what are the tools available? So say, for example, air purification, water purification, EMF mitigation, reducing exposure to junk light or LED lights, and then detoxing as the fifth one, which I think people should be doing last. So those basically are the five key areas. And then I'm happy to dive into those individually with you. So all of those areas, pretty much our environment and our, mm -hmm. our environment is determining our health and essentially the radiance of our skin or the deterioration of our skin. So let's dive into those areas. Of course, they could read the paper and, and go deeper on your website, schoolofradiance.com. But let's extract a few things there. Let's start with the, the air around us. I know the importance personally of clean air. I have uh, three of these Jasper machines all over my house. I have one right here. I have one in the other room and one in the bedroom. There's also different air purification uh, devices out there. But why is it so important to have clean air in your house? Well, actually, what I found in my research on its impacts on the skin, obviously, we know about mold and most of the body's basically exposure to heavy metals comes from the air, believe it or not. And the other interesting thing is when it comes to washing your face, I think cleanliness is next to godliness. So rinsing off the day, <laughs> there's also that saying too. But with washing our face in the AM and the PM with the double cleanse in the PM, we are actually rinsing off debris from the air from our skin. So if you have sensitive skin, don't skip over washing your face twice a day. Even if someone on YouTube told you to only wash your face once, forget that information. This is more high level what, expert information. Here. What is uh, what does double cleanse mean? I'm not sure I know what that means. Oh, great. Great question. It's simply washing your face twice in a row. So you have a cleanser, you wash your face with it, at least in the evening, you said, and then you do it again. You Double got cleanser. it. You got oh. it. So it's not just a splash of water in the AM. You do want to use a cleanser. And I'm actually creating an incredible cleanser that's free of parabens, salate, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances, and also microplastics. Yeah. That's, I, want to, I want to try that when it's out, by the way. And yeah, the microplastics thing. I was just doing a live stream earlier today and I shared the average person eats five grams worth of plastic each week, a credit card. So this oh is very God. important. It's, it's crazy. That's all. <laughs> when is that going to come out, that product? Yeah, this year I'm in the final stages of research and development and packaging because glass packaging is also really important to me. So stay yeah. tuned. And it's just something I'm really proud to put my name on. Having worked with over 18 different practitioner grade brands since 2011 and basically you know, how can I make the best cleanser possible based on all the other cleansers I've tried and used and rinses off easily, takes off your makeup and all that fun stuff. Guy friendly too. So yes, use your cleanser, not just a splash of water in the AM. And then in the PM, you're literally just washing your face twice. The first cleanse is removing the debris from the air actually and makeup and cosmetic creams and all of that. And then your second cleanse is actually washing your face. That's interesting. Okay. So two cleanses, well, actually three, if you count the double cleanse morning, evening, evening is the double cleanse. And then, you know, I know we're going to get into the other things here in the paper, but just on the conversation of cleansing, are we putting moisturizer on after that? How important is it to moisturize the face to make sure uh, that helps prevent wrinkles, et cetera? Well, most of you listening are probably taking a multivitamin or nutrients and minerals. And that's really what a moisturizer does. A lower quality moisturizer is going to hydrate for about 20 minutes, but a really well formulated product, which obviously that's coming too, that is going to be hydrating, but it's also going to be nourishing the skin with antioxidants and peptides. And by the way, uh, peptides have become very popular in the biohacking space over the last couple of years, but it's not new in the medical aesthetics world at all and especially in skincare. So it's good to avoid the trends and the gimmicks and you know, really what works and what stood the test of time. So what's really interesting about the air in my research on, okay, why, what angle can I find here on purifying the air to get better skin? And get this, debris in the air actually tells your keratinocyte stem cells to die faster. Mm. That's like I, I didn't even know that until I started doing the research on this paper. So if you need an incentive to wash your face, well, there you go. Basically, part of, particles in the air 
are telling your skin cells to die faster. They're told to undergo a process called apoptosis. We don't want that. We want to speed up cell turnover, yes, but we don't want our healthy skin cells to die prematurely. And depending on where you are, you might be dealing with things like forest fires, industrial processes, emissions, but also VOCs in the home from packaging, building materials. So I love to recommend an air purifier in your your main living space and near your kitchen to gobble up the VOCs, those volatile organic compounds from cooking, and then also where you sleep. That's really important too. So that's the science behind why air purification is key for healthy skin as well. It's really important. Uh, that's why construction workers look so old. <laughs> and that and because it's a very stressful job. But yeah, the the air quality is, is very important. I did not know that about stem cells and how it's creating faster apoptosis. I didn't know that either until I started to do the research and literary reviews. <laughs> That's wild. That's super wild. Okay. What about, um, what else here in those five key areas? So this is the environment in terms of the air quality. What What, what is another key thing to focus on here? Well, let's jump to water. And depending on where you live, the water quality can be half decent, but there's always processes that are done to kill microbes. And those are going to be using different chemicals. And also there are traces of pharmaceuticals in the water too. So it's really important to purify your water. Now there's a few different things that we can do to water. We can purify it through reverse osmosis, for example, you can alkalize it, you can hydrogenize it, you can structure it, and you can remineralize it. And get this, I actually found a technology, a company that's doing this when I was at an event at a conference in Florida. That's why I love to go to these events and meet the people behind the companies to you know, see if they're operating in integrity or not. Yeah. It's, like, it's important for me to know that about the companies. And I was really, really happy to see that there's actually a company that's doing all four. In, in one in one technology and product. So the whole there's whole home under the sink, there's countertop, there's shower filters too. And it's just really important to be aware of the water that you are drinking and bathing in and also cleaning your dishes with as well. And most people know to not drink out of plastic bottles also. And even if you're at a restaurant, don't drink the restaurant water unless you ask the server and say, hey, do you filter your water? Is it reverse osmosis? Otherwise, you know, you definitely want to go for a bottle of say mineral water that they serve. That's a good tip. I always do that. Like they're always going to naturally just give you that tap water and I'm, I'm, I'm not drinking it. You can actually smell it. It just smells mm -hmm. off. So I was asked for bottled water, mineral water, et cetera. The company that you found out uh, about in, at the Orlando conference, what was the name of that company? It's actually at a Fort Lauderdale conference and it's pH prescription. PH prescriptions. Mm -hmm. I've not heard of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had never heard of them either. Actually. I only found out about them because I went to this event and they have some cool products. So just, I was so happy to see that there's actually a technology and a company that's able to incorporate all four of those things because sometimes people will hook up an alkalizing machine or an ionizing machine to their tap, but they're mineralizing unfiltered water. Yeah, yeah. Which doesn't make sense to me. And there's other things that you can do as well for enhancing your water. There's different biohacking technologies out there that can help to structure it. And it actually will taste better. The water in our bodies is already structured. But when we drink it from the tap or the faucet, it loses the bond angles of the oxygen and then the two hydrogens. The, the angles and how they connect to other water molecules are also impacted. So structuring is just gonna get those, get those molecules into the position that they need to be. And I thought I was doing myself a favor on my adventure off-grid days, 200 miles out of cell reception, four by fouring and drink river water. But then I got a whole bunch of parasites, but we'll oh. talk about that and what I <laughs> did to Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the parasite thing. Oh. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely circle back to that. But to your point, you explained that really well, by the way. When I have a lot of students ask me, what does structured water mean? <laughs> and I do my best to explain it. You did a really good job explaining it. I have uh, Lila Quantum's, uh, mm -hmm. like I have their, their necklace, but I also have their infinity block. And 
So I, every morning when I make my coffee or if I have water, uh, I'm putting it in that infinity block, four minutes, five minutes, structuring it, and I'm drinking it. And it's, it's, it's pretty much making it more efficient for my body to utilize it just to make it <laughs> a one sentence uh, explanation. But to your point, a lot of people are buying a uh, hydrogen machine, alkalize, alkalize, alkalinic machines, alkalinizing machines, but they're connecting it to tap water and they're just <laughs> drinking tap water. So yeah. I use a, I use a Dr. Paul Baratero's company, the echo. Uh, I have a hydrogen machine, yeah. but it, yeah, but it filters it out. My house here that we're renting has a whole house filter, but that's just like a second filtration process too. Yeah. I love the technologies that you mentioned, the Lila Quanta block, the Soma Vedic is also one too. And I've actually done some research on the Soma Vedic and found some neat things. I'm a huge fan of energy coherence technology because what I study is radiance, you know, the skin stuff, the biohacking stuff, but really the radiance stuff is something that's very intriguing to me. And I'm going to nerd out here. I have a background in Gen Chem Organic Chem and Biochem on top of my nursing degree. And did you know that 80% of you and everything else around us is space? Space. I thought you were going to say water. No, it's space. And this is actually called the quintessence, the fifth element, the dark matter. Mm, and so okay. I'm a huge fan of how can we actually optimize the space between. And this is a part of radiance. This is like the energy in Ayurveda. It's the, ra the radiant body is the 10th body in Ayurveda. So depending on how well your body, mind, spirit operating systems are running and other aspects of yourself too, the 10th body is the electromagnetic projection of all of those systems. So it's just been really neat kind of studying people over the years, why some people are more lovely to be around. They just have better lives. What are they doing in their lives? And why is that happening? And I'm really excited to really my mission, I think, is to just help other people be more radiant. And it comes from being as pure as possible. That's why I love to dive deep into this oxidative stress status because that's a huge part of it. So water is really exciting, but the Lila quantum block is really neat too. And we can dive into that a little bit more um, when we talk about the electromagnetics. Yeah. Okay. So air, water. I love this idea of making people more radiant and tapping into this energy around us and not just tapping into the energy, but also the energy that we omit, we, we all heard, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. And it is true. It like, it, yeah. it, it's so true. The energy you put out there attract. So if you're constantly thinking about negativity, this thinking, thinking, all the things you hate, uh, you hate Trump, you hate Biden, you're going to start attracting people who have that same mentality, that vibration. <laughs> it's just going to naturally happen. But once you start getting into that abundance, loving, the vitamin G gratitude mindset, the health, mm -hmm. the vitality, the re then you start attracting those people in your life. And it really does happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very powerful. And I think, I don't, I don't know if we're ever going to understand how that works, but I'm telling you, it's working I'm doing it. That's every such, second. Rachel's going to give us mission. the science. <laughs> my mission, how, bring, bring the, the science to the woo, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good line right there. Bring bring in the science to the woo woo. Uh, I mean, it's woo until we can put some science behind it. This is true. You know, when I first heard about Lila Quantum, I was like, "There's no way. This is this sounds so stupid." I no, mean, it's come legit. on, it's legit. Right? So right. I, they, they have science, and then I used it, and I'm like, "This is legit." Mm -hmm. Pretty Go cool. Ahead. I mean, it's like this block, but anyways, I can explain the science behind it. But there's one more thing I wanted to mention about the water is the pipes. Now, have you ever seen? pipes in your local city dug up to get cleaned out? I don't think so. No, biofilms accumulate just like all the sludge and garbage that you do not want in your body that accumulates. And then also in my research, a lot of PVC piping is utilized as well. It's like the plastic piping and that emits phthalates, which are known hormone disruptors. Fun. Obesogens mm. in your tap water. We got obesogens. We have birth control pills. We have this medication, this statin, all in our, our tap water. Yeah. And it's not about being paranoid about this stuff, you know, the tinfoil hatter, if you will, or being too extreme with it all. We don't, we never want to be too extreme. We want to be balanced. And when you simply start to employ these practices of purifying your air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and detoxing, it's part of your lifestyle. You don't have to think about it. And that's not going to stress yourself out. But the trick is 
to not only do it for yourself, but also with your family, your whole family, right? Those kids are always watching you. But if you're, if you are in a partnership where they don't get it and, you know, I actually, in my previous situation, (laughs) had my air purifiers unplugged. Why? Because, you know, too much energy, right? So when we're on this path of health. Like it was, it was using too much energy and the bill, like electric bill was up. Is that what you mean? It was, it was an excuse. It's like, I don't see the value in this. I'm just going to. Got it. Got it. it. So there was a mismatch with you and your ex-partner. Yeah, totally. And the reason was that it was using too much energy. Unplug it. If you're a biohacker and you are on the path of becoming your best version, this can happen. So when two people in a partnership and relationship are both on board with this, you're going to have a better relationship in general, shared values and good boundaries and not, you know, unplugging air purifiers or water. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> boundaries, so important. So important. And I just wanted to add that because I know a lot of people that are on this path can feel very alone and isolated and it's just, it's so important important to partner up with people that, you know, see the value in looking after yourself. And you're going to be a better partner because you're also going to be less toxic. So it's not just about having a trim waistline with following a specific diet or protocol. You're literally going to be a better person because you're more pure and your brain can work better and you can communicate better. You're not going to have brain fog and nervous system dysregulation. Yeah, it's so important. Minerals, minerals, minerals. You hear a lot of people out there speaking about the benefits of taking minerals. And it is important because in this day and age, our crops, our fruits, and our vegetables, they are depleted of minerals. The crops we have today are very different than the crops we had 10, 20, 30 years ago. And if you're doing a low carbohydrate, keto, carnivore diet with fasting, this is especially important for you because what happens when you lower insulin on these diets and fasting, you're gonna shed a lot of extra water weight, body water weight, which is great. You're gonna feel lighter, look lighter, but the problem is that your kidneys kinda go through this diuresis process where it sheds minerals and electrolytes. So you've heard of the keto flu, you've heard of symptoms doing keto and fasting. People just don't feel good sometimes. This is the number one reason why. So my go-to for replenishing my electrolytes and my minerals, for enhancing my immune system, for gut support, for detoxification, is bean minerals. I love bean minerals because it's simply a liquid I drink every day. It doesn't taste like anything, it tastes like water. And I know I'm replenishing those electrolytes and those minerals. As a matter of fact, it has fulvic and humic compounds and these have over 70 trace minerals and really important electrolytes to replenish your body with. They have these incredible sprays that I take with me when I play basketball, when I'm on the go. If you have muscle cramps, you spray this directly. They're called the Instalite spray. There's also the capsules that I take with me when I travel, the Electro Boost capsules that I take with me to make sure when I'm traveling, I'm supporting the immune system and I'm staying hydrated and my minerals are being replenished. Check out Bean Minerals over at beanminerals.com. Use the coupon code Azadi, my last name, at checkout to get a nice discount. That is A-Z-A-D-I at checkout over at beanminerals.com. And, and, you know, you mentioned the word like radical, extreme, et cetera. I was just in Utah last week. Uh, I love Utah. Yeah, I was in Park City with Dr. Pampa, and uh, we were having dinner, and my fiance was there. We were talking about some of the radical things women do, but men do it too, but mostly women do to alter their face to look younger. And one of the things that Natasha, my fiance, brought up is this um, the buccal fat. Is it called buccal fat, buccal fat? Are you familiar with that? Yeah. yeah. Right here. Exactly. The fa- explain what it is and, and what people are doing uh, because it's it was, Pompa couldn't believe it. And I saw some photos of it. I think it's really radical. So what exactly are they doing there? Mm-hmm. Well, there's many different rejuvenation options out there, whether it's skincare, whether it's microneedling. By the way, you can dermal roll at home. I love to teach this. been seeing the results for more collagen, elastin, pigmentation reduction since 2011. And actually learned from one of the initial researchers who wrote the Bible on dermal rolling, Dr. Len Setterfield. That's who I learned from straight out of the gate. And it's such That's a cool. cost-effective way. And you're using peptides, right? Copper peptides and all sorts of cool things. and 
With rejuvenation, there's the home care and then there's the in clinic. So I love to plan this out also for my clients. That's what I do because there's so much noise out there and a lot of gimmicky things too, or products that just haven't been on the market long enough and we don't know the safety and long-term ratifications or impacts of it. So I do take a very conservative approach to rejuvenation for that reason, because I've seen things go wrong. Now with rejuvenation, if something's bothering you and you want to address it, say it's acne scarring, pigmentation, hooded upper eyelids, lower eye bags, dark circles, sagging to the jawline, you know, hair loss, necklines, the waddle under the chin. There's so many things that if we're looking in the mirror and we want to do something about and we're healthy enough to do it, that's why, again, I wrote that paper to do all these things to reduce oxidative stress before even thinking about in clinic stuff. And same thing with your home care, with your skincare, dermal rolling, peels, using actives, taking skin nutrients, doing all that stuff first before doing the in clinic. You'll just have better results because you're doing the heavy lifting ahead of time at home actually. And then you invest in things to take care of what's left over. So when it comes to things like surgery, actually eyelid surgery and rhinoplasty are the two most commonly performed surgeries. Eyelid surgeries are really popular for men actually. And sometimes, sometimes the surgical option is going to be the most time and cost effective solution as opposed to you know, scrolling your social media and seeing some very compelling before and after photos that are actually probably reused by multiple companies mm. or they're photoshopped. And, you know, I can see this from a mile away, but it's hard for you listening to know what those are. So what's, with the eye, what's eyelid surgery? Just real quick. What is that? Yeah, that's actually been my area of expertise for over 11 years. It is commonly performed by a surgeon called an ophthalmologist and oculoplastic surgeon. It's kind of like the top of the food chain of the dermatology plastic surgery world. And that's where I've sat for a long time. So basically we can actually remove the excess skin on the upper eyelid or for the lower eyelid, remove excess skin, remove excess fat, and even reposition fat. And so, I mean, it just has to, it's all of this stuff. Rejuvenation is half art, half science. So when you see people and they're really overdone, you, you can't help but notice it when someone's features have been distorted and then their features are outside of the ideal facial ratios. Yeah. So say, for example, everyone knows about the duck lips and the big lips. Yeah. Someone's lips enter the room before they do sort of thing. <laughs> you know, it comes down to if the individual just really likes that look and they don't know how to say no, or they see a practitioner and that's the look that they do. I know in Miami, that's also a really popular look. Yes. <laughs> everyone kind of looks the same. Very, especially in LA too, but yeah, Miami is very similar. Yeah, different pockets in the world. I know the UK is really big with that too. There's just different kind of trends with different cities that I've noticed, but looking healthy and being healthy and having healthy skin, that's never going to go out of style. Just like a good attitude and a positive outlook on life. It's never going to go out of style. And even for those of you tuning in who say you want to do rejuvenation, but you can't afford to do rejuvenation, that's okay. Work on yourself. Be healthy. Because I, I'm telling you, I see men and women in their 60s to 90s. They're retirees. They can't afford rejuvenation, but they actually look better, it, right? It's their demeanor. It's how they carry themselves. It's that energy that they give off. And fun fact, fun fact, you can actually see this with Kirli on photography. It's like contrast photography. Yeah. Our face and our hands are actually the highest emitters of light on the body, of photons. Isn't that cool? That is cool. We literally yeah. have little like lightning bolts coming off of our fingertips. I have a, a machine called the BioWell that you actually put your, your finger in this little box and then it extrapolates the quality and, and you know how much energy is coming off your fingertips. You get all this information. I actually use that to determine if I wanted to promote and talk about a certain piece of technology. And I was actually able to measure greater dual output, which tells me that, wow, this piece of tech actually, if it increases dual output, what's making energy in our body, mitochondria. Interesting. Yeah. So it has a mitochondrial benefit. What, I'm so what do you, yeah, no, I love it. So fascinating. So Rachel, what do you think 
the hands and the face are the highest concentration of energy. Why, why do you think it's the hands and face? I think it's how we were designed. But why? I, I know that's how we were designed, but why, why do you think it's the hands and face that have the most? There has to be, you know, I always think about the human body as like survival is the name of the game. Mm-hmm. Like, like the mitochondria, for example, the cells that have the most mitochondria are the cells most needed for survival, brain, eyes, ovaries, testicles, et cetera. So I'm always thinking like energy, hands and face, maybe that helps us sense a predator. I don't know. I'm thinking like, why is it the face in the, in the hands? I think it might be for communication. Mm. So say, for example, we're communicating, typically our face is exposed and typically our hands are exposed and we're doing gestures with them. I think it's just kind of the design of our operating process. It's kind of cool. I love it. I dig it. I think it's super cool. I've never been asked that before. That's such a great question. Yeah. Yeah. It just came to mind. I'm always wondering why. Oxidative stress. What are, you know, you mentioned the environment, the clean air, the clean water. What are some other things in terms of the dietary aspect of oxidative stress that we should, that, um, we got to talk about lighting too. Yeah. Yeah. Dietary hundred percent. Let's, let's get into that. Yeah. Let me ask it. Let me ask it this way though. Um, what are the worst things to eat (laughs) that create the most oxidative stress? Processed foods. I mean, we know, we know a lot about different ingredients like nitrates. There's Mm -hmm. correlation with things like colon cancer with that heavily processed meat. So depending on how that meat was processed and what's added, different things like MSG. But when it comes to the food, I've actually come across something really interesting that with a number of the different food test kits that are out there, I've actually seen a correlation with eating for your blood type. However, when you're doing gut tests and nutrition tests, you're getting a more specific readout and basically a blueprint of how your gut is operating at that time, which I think is a more sophisticated approach than testing. You know, it's, it's testing instead of guessing. So when it comes to the foods, well, let's, let's talk about that for a second. I know we talked about this before we started recording here, but over the holiday, the last holiday we had was a while ago, I was the official cookie taste tester. Mm-hmm. And That's I live in gig. Yeah, I did a really good job. I got a really great report on my work. So thanks, mom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I live in moderation. So about 99.99% of the time, I'm making really stellar choices. But I also want to live a little sometimes, you know, have those cookies, maybe have a cocktail every now and again, have something I wouldn't typically have. So, say, for example, a more gluten dairy and sugar and alcohol. But I got to tell you, I find contrast really important to notice. And the more pure you are, the lower your oxidative stress status is, the faster you can determine and decipher if maybe some of the choices that you've made a couple days leading up to that or a couple weeks leading up to you, maybe noticing more redness and puffiness around the eyes or around the mouth, irritation to the scalp, disturbances with your gut and digestion, your energy and pain levels. I'm telling you, after I, you know, completed my operations as the official cookie taste tester, taste tester, I was hurting. And I was in two car crashes a number of years ago. So that's why I do all this stuff too, is so that I'm not in pain and that I'm a pleasure to be around. And it was just an interesting contrast, like how much my whole upper body was hurting so much. And can you guess what I did to, to alleviate that? Fasting. Mm-hmm. Yep. The first four days in January, I did a pretty decent fast. I, ha- I had dinner at, say, 7 o'clock on evenings, and I just fasted throughout. And I did that for about four days, and guess what? That pain was gone. Mm. I, w- I was back. My energy levels were back. So if you are living in moderation, you're going on holiday with your loved ones, you're, you know, live in large for a little bit, maybe when you return to your routine to add in some fasting and just have, you know, a, a later dinner, if you will. I want to talk more about fasting because you had mentioned before we hit record that you got to really understand your body. As you're talking about here, you pay attention to the symptoms, the communication from your body. And there's some times that fasting makes sense and we want to do it. 
and you'll get amazing benefits. And there's some times where maybe not too much fasting. So share a little bit more about how you go about it. Well, it's a little bit different for men and women. Yeah. Women have, I mean, we're four different people at any time of the month. <laughs> that is true, depending on which week of the cycle, right? Yeah. And I'm also very happy to say that I actually don't have any PMS symptoms. That's great. You shouldn't be having cramping. You shouldn't be getting headaches. And if you are, that's actually a sign that your hormones are off and absolutely dive into your reducing oxidative stress with everything we're talking about here. So for those of you ladies listening, if your cycle is off, then it's really important that you pay attention to that and don't just pop a painkiller or dive into the chocolate, which also has oxalate. So cut that with a little bit of lemon juice. My, uh, my friend Dave Asprey taught me that. So you have the lemon juice before or after the chocolate? Uh, before. Okay. And then it cuts down the, the oxalate effects, the damaging effects of the oxalate, especially dark chocolate has more oxalates. Correct. Correct. So everything, doing all this stuff, it's also about deprogramming yourself. Because say, for example, the food guide, it's just terrible. If I ate that, I'd probably have like an extra 15, 20 pounds on me and yeah. have not great skin and losing my hair and all of that. And also with women, this is really important. So we're talking about fasting as a woman and, and fasting in general, but it should be intuitive. So say, for example, a few days ago, I did a really similar thing. I went until about dinner time to have my meal but I broke it up with, say, a protein shake at maybe one o'clock, staying really hydrated. And if I noticed myself getting a little bit jittery or a little bit shaky, and I'll experience this actually, and some of you might be able to relate with this. If you are fasting too hard, if I'm going up or down stairs, I'll feel more shaky and jittery. And if you are feeling that, that's a sign that your blood sugars are like probably way off and you need some sugar in your system, you should eat something. So those could be something to allow you to read what your body wants. But say, for example, today, you know, I, I definitely had a breakfast and you just really want to lean into what your body's telling you. If, you're, if your body's telling you, you know, have a protein shake just after lunch, have dinner, stay hydrated throughout the day, take your superfoods and adaptogens as well that aren't going to break your fast. And if you feel good, do it. But then if you're kind of like you wake up and you're, you're hungry and your body wants to be fed, give it what it wants. So it's, I think for women, it's going to be a little bit more intuitive. But doing a long fast is also something that really reset my entire body, body, mind, spirit, energy. I know we talked about this last time. In the we did. Episode. It changed your life. It did. Yeah, my skin transformed, my body composition transformed. And even just the way that I looked at life in general, everything. Once I finished that fast, I literally had to change my entire life because I could finally see things more clearly. And that's sometimes really hard to do. And for women, it's also important to look at the programming side of things, of working like a man, leading the household, things like that. Women are meant to push for a short period of time. It's called childbirth. But they're, women aren't meant to push for a long period of time. But this goes way back. If you watch Mary Poppins, they had a nanny. Mary Poppins was a nanny. What was the mom doing? She was getting out there talking about women's rights. So these types and like picketing and all, watch the movie. You'll see exactly what I mean. And then it emasculates the men and all sorts of things with the family dynamic there. But if you are listening to this and you are in a relationship, it's important to keep things balanced. That's why I'm not a fan of extremism in anything because then that creates division, which is not what we need more of. It's about just being grounded and centered in who you are, knowing what's important to you, what makes you feel good and doing more of that. And you're going to be a better person. You're actually going to be able to get along with more people, both personally and professionally and communicate better. And I have, you know, all sorts of strategies for communication and negotiation and all those fun things too that I utilize that I don't really want people to know that I know that I utilize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not, right? No, I, I love I love the um I love what you shared because it's really helping the viewer or the listener pay attention to their body. The body's always communicating with us. Symptoms are not I always talk about symptoms are not necessarily a bad thing. It's showing you 
maybe you might be too much fasting, doing too much mm-hmm. fasting. Maybe you, you know, you did too much cold plunge or too much sauna. That is, that happens, right? It does. All, yeah. Oh, I'm guilty of that too. Yeah. yeah same, right. They're, those are all stressors, right? And we're all so different. Somebody could do three minutes in a cold plunge. Somebody just needs to do 30 seconds. So it'll depend. But the way you pay attention to it is you tune into your body. So to your point, Rachel, fasting is a stress, just like exercise, just like cold plunge, just like sauna, just like red light. But it doesn't mean that stress is bad. It only means it's bad if you're doing too much and you're not adapting to it. And the only way to know is to pay attention to your body. And of course, we have different cool cool uh, tools like the Aura Ring and different things to look at HRV. But ultimately, you, t- you tune into your body and that is the best guide. And it sounds like that's what you do day in, day out. Mm-hmm. But the body isn't separate from your mind or your spirit or your energy or your emotions. It's all linked. So the better you care for your body, everything else will follow, right? You'll be able to meditate and pray more clearly, visualize, operate better, and just have better relationships in general. <laughs> all the things we want. I have a question for you. What's going to cause oxidative stress? What's going to cause more oxidative stress out of these scenarios? I'm going to give you four scenarios. Mm -hmm. They're all bad scenarios, so let's get that clear. But which one is worse as it relates to oxidative stress, skin damage, inflammation, et cetera? Number one, smoking cigarettes. Number two, processed eating processed sugar slash carbohydrates. Number three, process oils like vegetable oil, seed oils. And number four, a sedentary lifestyle. I'm actually going to say oils and sedentary lifestyle. Ah. Based on my personal experience. So say, for example, I'm sort of out of my routine, traveling a little bit, staying with family, visiting, things like that. I actually really notice this on my skin, on my upper back. It's like clockwork. If I'm not careful and conscious about the pans that the food's cooked in, even. So I always say about everybody, I love cast iron cookware. <laughs> <laughs> but, men, but men need to be careful with cast iron. Oh, tell me more about that. No, just because typically men have higher levels of iron and ferritin. And when they eat out of cast iron very frequently, it raises iron and ferritin. So... Uh, For menstruating women, it's great. For men and sometimes postmenopausal women, it could be a problem. Good to know. So then there's the stainless steel option. Exactly. That's what I go for. Yeah. Not aluminum, not anything that's coated, but straight up good old stainless steel. It's going to last you forever, by the way. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So that's what I notice is if I'm not in, you know, my beautiful biohacked out place, it's, Mm -hmm. that's what I see. It's a little bit more sedentary because I'm out of my usual routine and I'm not eating my typical foods that I eat and I I cook a ton myself. And that's really important to learn how to cook and have fun doing it. It's really, really key because restaurant foods, it's just brutal, right? There are some restaurants that you can go to that are healthier. And I know I reached out to you like, Hey, can you give me a recommendation for West Palm beach? And it's funny, the place that you recommended I'd been there before, uh, when, yeah, did you avocado grill? When I met you, right? I met you at that peptide at, at the Mastermind at mm-hmm. West Palm Beach. That's right. I actually ended up going to Avocado Grill that same weekend we met as well. Oh yeah, I love it. And uh, to link back to rejuvenation, when I'm sitting in the room with all of these brilliant minds, there are probably about thirty people, some of the best stem cell and peptide visionaries out there. I felt like I was sitting in a room that would have felt like when, say, Botox came out. Wow. That's Mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. So neuromodulators, neurotoxins for rejuvenation, getting back to the rejuvenation stuff. It's been around since the nineties and it's taken a while for the products themselves to be reformulated to, you know, some of them are are cleaner than others for sure, but then also how it's applied. And I, I really saw this kind of like parallel with where the stem cell and exosome world is now. So I'm really excited to see where that's going to be in about 10 years or so, because in my experience, it takes about seven to eight years for a product and a protocol to be pretty well dialed in. And that's just what I've learned from aesthetics. I'm super excited to see where peptides and peptides and exosomes and stem cells end up with how they help people. 
But your, your four scenarios are very good scenarios. Smoking, what that does to the skin is it actually makes the skin look very gray. Mm. Is, it actually, the, is it the smoke or is it the nicotine or is it both? Well, some people love nicotine. Some people yeah, me say- too. Nic- I, I personally love it. It, it, yeah. it, 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 um, it lowered my HDL, which mm-hmm. is not good. So I need to take a longer break from it. But in general, I like nicotine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've utilized it too. And it's been really helpful. With the chemicals in cigarettes and also the pursing of the mouth. So if oh, we're- I haven't even thought about that. That's true. Pursing or side sleeping, we're contributing to vertical lines. Mm. So I think it's those two things. And just the way that the muscles are constantly engaged and then the skin gets wrinkled. It's like- Folding a piece of paper, if you fold it like really solid, it's going to keep that fold as opposed to if you just kind of slightly bend it. But if you do it all the time, you're going to get a fold, which is really what causes a static wrinkle. But to really answer this question of what I think is the thing that's contributing most to oxidative stress in us now, and actually what, in my opinion, is the smoking of our generation is electromagnetic okay, radiation. Okay, EMFs. Okay. I thought you were going to say sitting. I'm like, what I'm doing right now, Rachel? Okay. <laughs> and why EMF. are there cellular radiation? This yeah. is, so this is why you like sleep in EMF proof like mats and pajamas and you travel with it. Like you're you're sold on EMFs being really bad for oh, us. Oh, I'm wearing EMF pants right now. Business right. on top is like- I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have my Faraday pouch here for my phones right beside uh, me too. So share why. Why is why are EMFs so damaging to us? Well, it was actually part of kind of my story, right? So during the pandemic, there wasn't really anything I could do on Vancouver Island. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. So what am I going to do? I'm going to work and then I'm going, going to go in nature where nobody else is because people are losing their ish. <laughs> <laughs> so I would go four by fouring. I'd hop in my Jeep and then I got another, a, a more reliable vehicle because I turned into Bush Mechanic. And, but it's still older. It's 2006. So no, I'm, you're not going to catch me in a Tesla. That's for sure. Anytime soon. <laughs> but what I, what I noticed was I just felt better. So when I did a solid day hiking in the woods, being outside of cell reception, just being in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, hiking some of the most treacherous trails out there, actually, I consider doing search and rescue, but I needed to rescue myself actually, mm. which is what I learned after the fast. Every, everything in your life, nothing's a mistake. Things are challenges. You overcome them. They're not roadblocks. They're obstacles. And it's all part of your journey and story. So if you're going through a tough time, just know you're going to come out on the other end. Just keep looking after yourself with the things we're talking about here. Amen. Yeah, thank you. So when I was doing those off-grid days, that's what I call them, bring up my girlfriend and say, hey, Lana, let's let's, uh, hop in the four by. And then that whole week, my skin would just be glowing and I would have great energy. I was feeling better. I was also recovering from not one, but two car crashes. The second one, I was on my way. Oh, look at that. Did you see the balloons? I did, yeah. I get, <laughs> I get a kick out of that on Zoom. Because I use my hands a lot too. Like, yeah, that like, happens to me with like thumbs up and all that. Sorry. So two car crashes, how, how close to each other? A year and a half. But the second oh, one, I was actually on my way to the ocean to do a cold plunge. Oh. None of the accidents for myself. So anyways, first one was in like my university Honda Civic. Second one, T-boned, distracted driver, ran a red light. She was actually driving with something covering her face. Totally like not even aware. Didn't even slow down. And I got crunched on the side mm. in her Camaro. It was just ironic because I was going to heal myself from the first one. So anyways... I started to notice these huge shifts in my skin. It was just like, it was looking clearer and all of that. And then in my research, so this is actually also, I became really interested in electromagnetics from a very young age. When I was 10 years old, I did this like the science fair project and got this award in the newspaper on magnets. I, I, I'm, t- I'm a huge nerd. Like this, the, I love connecting with scientists and the scientists are fun because they're total recluses. The smartest people out there are, aren't on shows because they have no social skills. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, they're just making incredible technology, which, which I love. It's, it's not about how much money you have for this stuff. It's who you know. Mm-hmm. So having a keen interest in electromagnetics from a young age is, is why it's kind of come full circle with the radiant stuff, which is really, really interesting to, to notice. 
But in about 2017, 2018, I was doing some research online on EMFs. And I found a website. It starts with the W, ends with an O, it's three letters. And there was a page there that said it was suspected that about 15% of the global population is electromagnetically hypersensitive. 15? One five? One five. Wow. I can't find that page anymore. (laughs) But then also in my research on the paper, what I discovered was the higher someone's oxidative stress status is, the more sensitive they are to electromagnetics. Makes sense to me. And it's like this invisible... It's like this invisible soup that we're in. So getting outside barefoot every day is so key. Mm. And I love PEMF. Some PEMF technologies make me feel better than others. And Same. Then, me too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, it's not, I can't do like these broad strokes of I love this or I don't love this. Again, that's going too extreme because our recommendations could change and our opinions could change on things. So it's just interesting that I've kind of been following along the research on EMFs and wireless cellular radiation for a while now. I started talking about it online and then for some reason, no one could find my stuff anymore. <laughs> for some reason, huh? <laughs> yeah, now everybody's talking about it. It's, it's become more mainstream, which is so good. Yeah. Because I just think of these kids, right? They're on technology. They're sitting in the back of a Tesla. You mm. know, we're getting like fried. Yeah. Apple AirPods in their ears, frying I've their never brain. Used them. I've never yeah, used me, them. Me too. And all the videos I made, a lot of the videos, yeah, good job. A lot of the videos <laughs> I make on AirPods, they go viral because people relate to it. But um, what boggles me, Rachel, is when I see a longevity expert wearing AirPods. Like, what an oxymoron, huh? I know. Or their aura ring is not on airplane mode. Or the horror ring is, but how do you know? You wouldn't know that unless you speak to them, right? But yeah. Well, I do. This is, this is how I vet them. Ah. I say, oh, you're wearing an aura ring. Oh, is it on airplane mode? I'm like, what? I'm like, okay. <laughs> now, I put my aura ring on airplane mode, but there are times, maybe a few hours a day where it's not. How much, and I don't know the answer to this, so maybe I got to leave it on airplane mode more, but how much EMFs is my aura ring emitting when it's not on airplane mode? Is it a well, lot? You- I don't know a, a number, okay. but you could easily pick up like the trifold meter or actually. <laughs> I have a meter actually. I should use yeah, it. I would check it out and just okay. see, see what it's emitting. But it's not just that. It's also the wiring in the home. So I'll break the science down of why nature feels so good. So the earth gives off these coherent sine waves, very coherent sine waves, which go through the body. The body loves it, knows how to respond to it. You can't evolve through EMF exposure because it damages your DNA and blood and all sorts of things. I can get into the science to that too. When we're in our homes, what happens is we get these garbled sine waves. They're just all over the place. They're totally scattered. They're scrambled. And then those go through the body, right? So that's why some of these energy coherent technologies are really interesting to me to create more coherence around you and your home and your loved ones when you just have it around or plug it in, right? But it's I have a little bit of a hard time with like some of these sticker situations. <laughs> I don't really know how much those types of things are going to do. So what, I'm what do you mean, like like a like a phone iPhone case, or what do you mean sticker like, situation? You've probably and I experimented with some of these as well over the years. I uh, like different pendants or different stickers. That you put on your on your phone EMFs. sometimes that blocks CMFs. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen those. But in my research, and I've been following the work of a researcher, Dr. Beverly Rubik, since about 2017, 2018. And she says, and I've actually been able to test this when I used to wear the aura ring and with my eight sleep mattress cover. I actually she says the best solution to protect yourself against EMFs is to shield yourself. So that's going to be through clothing or blanketing. Right. Basically making you a Faraday cage, whether you're wearing it or with your blankets or a canopy. Canopies are kind of ugly and kind of expensive. So, yeah, just walk around in your spacesuit. No one's going to notice. Is that how you travel, right? You travel that way? (laughs) Oh, I'm quite a sight. Yeah, I have. um, Well, number one, I go for a pat down every time. And I always have my EMF clothing underneath like my yoga pants or something like that. And then I. I travel with my hoodie, my silver, like it's like it falls up to something like this. So I get in my seat, 
put on my EMF hoodie, got the pants on already. I'm set. You know, I have my blue light blocking glasses on. Then I do my brain tap. I got, you know, some other frequency tech next to me. It's quite a sight, but on a on an airplane, everyone's just in their own world. They don't even notice. I've, I don't think I've really noticed anyone being like, what the fuck is she doing right mm-hmm. now? <laughs> I love it. You're like next level. I, I do something similar. I wear EM, uh, Lila Quantum's EMF uh, proofing jacket and then they're boxers, but... Uh, I love I love that you're you're not going through the um, security checkpoint. You're getting padded versus the machine, the X-ray machine, and uh, you're wearing brain tap on an airplane. I haven't thought about doing that. Oh, I know. I'm next level. I got to protect these these very special ovaries for when I have Me a beautiful family. Me too. Very important reproduction. Absolutely. I, I love that. Okay, so she said mm-hmm. the best way, Beverly, Doctor Beverly Rubik, the best solution is to EMF shield yourself. And you do that with different blankets. Like, uh, I'm about to get some from, uh, ultimate longevity. There's another, is there any other brand that you recommend for like EMF proofing sheets? Yeah, I have a couple on my biohacking page. Um, no choice makes some really great tech. I've tested a few different clothing lines and there is a variation in how well some of them block, some of them block better than others. What it actually comes down to is actually the closeness of the weave of the silver threads. Like huh. you're literally wearing silver. It's pretty cool, actually. It is cool. Yeah, and that makes sense to me. <laughs> so what is the website for the those products, the schoolofradiance.com or is it somewhere else? Yep, schoolofradiance.com yeah. and just go to my biohacking page. You'll find all my favorites and I'm always updating. You know, sometimes something might get the boot. Same with the skincare products. I sell 250 skincare and personal care products. So if quality has gone down or, you know, I don't really like the integrity of the company, they'll get the boot. And then I'll always be, I always update those resources. Mm-hmm. I love it. They'll get the boot. That's good. Um, the website is schoolofradiance.com. And uh, Rachel also hooked you all up with a coupon code to get 15% off store wide. So there's consultations, there's products, there's this, there's that. The coupon code is my full name, which is Ben Azadi, B-E-N-A-Z-A-D-I. I'll put that link and the coupon code in the notes of the YouTube and the podcast. So be sure to take advantage of that. Be sure that uh, Rachel has vetted everything on there. And if they change the quality, she just said they get the boot. (laughs) And I I respect that. Um, Final thoughts on the EMFs before we shift to the last question here. Yeah, they don't call a beauty sleep for nothing. So your sleep should be restorative. You shouldn't be sleeping in an EMF suit because your body isn't actually going to be regenerating and rejuvenating itself. So whether you're wearing clothes like underwear, a shirt, a beanie, like I said, it's quite a sight when I go to bed or you're sleeping in EMF sheets. That's really helpful because grounding and protecting yourself from EMFs just allows your blood to flow better. And hello, gentlemen out there who doesn't want good blood flow. Am I right? So when you're exposed to EMF, your red blood cells stick together and they get these jagged, there's morphology changes to the red blood cell five minutes on your phone. So even the iPhone itself says to use it hands-free if you read the- um, Correct. And not to charge it next to you as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that. So Um, there's that. And then when the blood cells stick together, your blood doesn't flow well and carrying oxygen and nutrients. So if you're finding you have low energy or you're not sleeping well, but the way I clued into this being so significant is the first night I slept in EMF shielding clothing and underwear and beanie, I had hundred percent sleep score on my aura ring and my eight sleep. Like there is something to this. And then there's also research that having better blood flow to the skin and the scalp, your skin will actually be less red. There's uh, actually research that EMF exposure makes the skin more red and sensitive hmm. and eye irritation. Damn, hundred percent sleep score, a hundred sleep score. I I've had my aura ring for like six years. I've never hit a hundred. I've hit ninety eight as the highest. That's that's interesting. Consistently, I, actually, even through one of the biggest challenges of my entire life. That speaks volumes. Um, yeah, so it's very important to do that. One of the problems I have here at my house that we're renting is that the our Wi-Fi is connected to our, our, our alarm system. So if I used to turn off the router at night, then the alarm would be turned off. So the way I have it is um, I put the router as far away as possible from the bedroom. Mm-hmm. And then I have the Leela Quantum Infinity Block kind of harmonizing the EMFs uh, around the bedroom as well. But I haven't figured out the optimal way to just turn off the Wi-Fi without sacrificing our security system. 
Well, we we're in the world. We're not of the world. You've probably heard that saying. So just simply wear your EMF clothing while you're working on your computer, because when you're live streaming or use utilizing your technology, it's kicking off like pretty much just as much as your router. So just don't even think about it. Just wear your EMF stuff on your lower body. I wear stuff underneath my upper body and then I sleep in it. And, and that's really helpful. I agree. It's important. It's not woo-woo. There's science. I've interviewed uh, Nick Pinault, who wrote mm-hmm. the Tinfoil Guide to EMFs. He's got a lot of research. So I love yeah. that you brought this up. And you believe it's the worst thing out there for your skin, radiant health. So I think it's the smoking of our generation. And of course, this is not medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. That's right. And we play that at the end of every podcast as well. <laughs> Rachel, final question. Hey, I want to just briefly interrupt the video you're watching to share something with you. One of my favorite companies that I use for health and longevity and biohacking is a company called Bond Charge. And they have a whole range of incredible products, including the blue light blocking glasses you see me wear right now. But one of my favorite products from them is an infrared sauna blanket. That's right. Uh, You don't have to spend a ton of money investing in a sauna or spending so much time driving to a facility with the sauna They actually created a sauna blanket that you could use in the comfort of your own home. And I use this all the time. Why would we want to even do a sauna? Well, there's a lot of research and a lot of studies showing the benefits of infrared sauna. The sauna blanket works by raising your heart rate to a workout or a training session. So you burn more calories while you're actually lying down and relaxing. You could burn up to 600 calories in one single session. Also, it's going to cause you to sweat. And one method of flushing out toxins from your body is through sweat. There's also one of my favorite benefits, this endorphin release, endorphin rush you get from using a sauna blanket. And every time I get out of the sauna blanket, I feel like I just got a 60-minute massage. And uh, that's because of the endorphin benefit from it. So how this works differently than a regular sauna is that it works by using infrared light, which heats the body directly rather than the air around you like a traditional sauna. This means you get the same benefit at a lower heat. So it's easy to set up. It's super convenient. 30 to 40 minutes uh, will suffice in terms of the length of the sessions. And you do that two to three times a week, going to feel amazing. Add that to your keto fasting protocol and watch what it does for your results. You could do it while you watch TV. You could do it while you read a book. I do it while I listen to an audio book. So if you want to learn more about the Bond Charge products, including the sauna blanket, head over to bondcharge.com slash keto camp. And if you use the coupon code keto camp at checkout, you'll get 15% off your sauna blanket. And actually any of their products are 15% off with that code. Bond Charge hooked you up. So head over to that domain or click the link down below and go get your Bond Charge products. All right, let's get back to today's video. Gratitude, vitamin G. What do you Mm -hmm. have vitamin G for right now? Being grateful for knowing my value. Mm. And being grateful to be of service. Those are really powerful um, things to be grateful for. Knowing your value. uh, How many people can say they know their value? Not a lot, unfortunately. And then being in a position to be of service to people, which you do a really amazing job. um, And you love what you do. That's why you've got so much longevity in this space because you wouldn't be able to keep doing what you're doing. You didn't love what you do. So I love that, Rachel. Um, Your website, schoolofradiance.com. Coupon code is Benazadi. Share your social media, and then let's land this plane together. Mm-hmm. Rachel Varga Official is where you can hang out with me on Instagram and the School of Radiance podcast. However, I will be changing my name to something fun. Stay tuned. Ooh, your topic. name. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can Stay actually t- change your name to whatever you want. That's you know true. You, you can. can. Yeah, you can. You're right. Um, oh, I can't wait for that. It'll still be <laughs> Rachel V., but the, I'm going to change the last name. Okay. And and by the way, um, Rachel and I are speaking at an event together in Los Angeles, California, uh, hosted by our mutual friend, Dr. K, who's been on the podcast a couple of times. And I'm, I'm getting the exact dates. But if you go to if you go to ketocamp.com slash speaking events, you could see it on there. I have a lot of speaking events this year. That is one of them. I'll be flying out to uh, Los Angeles. So it's March 7th and March 8th. 
biohack your beauty. And if you go to that page, there's a, there's a link, there's a coupon code. I know Rachel and I would love to see you. Rachel's going to be speaking about this conversation we had today, but to a deeper level. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be talking about more of the benefits of metabolic flexibility and, and mastering your blood sugar and insulin as it relates to skin health. So Rachel, I can't wait to see you in Los Angeles. It's going to be fun. Well, I look forward to seeing you and I wish I didn't have to wait. And at the end of the day, the reason why having better skin, fuller hair, better body composition, why that's actually less superficial than you might think is confidence is really key for when you decide to cultivate your community. Mm. And so for us to go to events and connect, love to connect with all of you, feel free to email me and also info at the school of radiance.com because we're all stronger together. And for those of us on this, you know, health optimization biohacking journey, it can feel a little bit lonely depending on where you live and what the people around you are like. So going to events is something that actually really charges me up is to be around like-minded individuals too. It's so much fun. Yeah. We hope to see you there for those watching and listening. Uh, and then Rachel and I will do round three on the Keto Camp podcast later this year. And we'll do that here at the studio. We'll cold plunge and then we'll sauna and we'll go back and forth and record a whole bunch of content. So I can't wait for that, Rachel. Thank you for coming back to the show. I know you're visiting family and uh, you made it happen. I appreciate you. Appreciate you too. Yeah, we'll talk about lighting and detox strategies. Let's do it.